a lot of the agreements like be impeccable with your word and then the be skeptical but learn to listen, a lot of them seem like you have the ability to like become something that you're not. Like some people are, you know, some people are so deep into the illusion that do you believe you have to be true? Like you have to tell your word yourself words that are true or do you tell yourself words that are really good that don't feel true so that you grow to something better? <laughs> you know, like people call it manifesting or being delusional. <laughs> well, the thing is intent. Okay. You know, like I move my hand. Yeah. What made it move my hand? Well, I give an order to my brain to move my hand. But what gave an order to my brain to give an order to my hand is intent. Mm -hmm. It's when you know. And when you're swimming in the world of knowledge and words, you know, it, it comes a moment that all we have to do is keep our conscious clean. If we keep our conscious clean, we're free. But if we betray our consciousness, then guilt, shame, and all the other aspects of emotions that get used by the word begins hurting ourselves. That's why the word warrior exists in the Toltec tradition, because we become a warrior not to fight the outside, but to unlearn all these things that make us not enjoy our life. And there's a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of fanatism, superstition out there in shamanism, in spirituality, and all of those that create stories to not grow, but to hide behind them. And when people behind them, you know, like everybody wants to be the Buddha without making the Buddha's work or walking the path of the Buddha or going through the, the unlearning. They just want the perfect image yep. so they can see. And then in the time of now, people are copying everybody to write the books. You know, they go into people's, you know, um, videos and, 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 and just copy them and, you know, become parrots. But they don't understand. And this is the corruption of spirituality that's been happening for 3,000 years. And it's because of search for power. And the search for power is what makes the humanity lose themselves. That's why I like the word strength. When we find our own strength to go through all our emotions, we clean up our consciousness. And this is when I really feel that our dream is separate from other people because we know that we're dreaming our own dream and we're owning what works for us and what doesn't work for us. Because imagine Robert Downey Jr. It didn't recover when he wanted to do it for other people with guilt and shame. But when he was tired of using, you know, drugs and alcohol, it was the easiest decision he made because he didn't want that in his life anymore. And it comes a moment in our life when we say, I don't want to be in this toxic relationship. I don't want to be in these things. And of course, we make it complicated because we don't want to change or we fear to change. We fear to take the action. But I tell you, when you are ready, you know, you have your intent behind you and you will free yourself. And then you wake up in a room where everybody's completely drunk and you're the only sober person. But it doesn't stop you from, you know, from enjoying life. Even there's negativity. You know, there's just children playing with knowledge instead of with toys. Mm. Okay, there was something else you said earlier about how everyone co goes to this moment where they're like, I can't live like this anymore. There must be more to life. So, and, and that that you say is like the beginning of the awakening point. So I've felt that in my life and I'm sure our listeners have felt that in their life as well. But I guess what would be the next steps after that <laughs> to start living authentically? <laughs> yeah, the first thing is to be aware of what makes us toxic. Mm. Not to other people, but to ourselves in our own dream and how we use the words to create that big victim that keeps on going forever. You know, something did happen to us at one point, but it's not happening anymore. And to let that go, we have to really appreciate life. Now, being aware of it is the metaphor of the garden. The garden will need work every day, not just one time. So the mind begins working and being exposed to life and not being afraid of life. But we begin now filtering the toxic parts that we use against ourselves, And sometimes memories come without warning. You know, something might happen to us that we see on television and bring back the triggers, but we know that's happening. So we have to unhook ourselves right away from the point of view of the victim and be the point of view of gratitude that we're not there anymore. And when you have the point of view of gratitude is that you really appreciate every moment that you have because the biggest currency is not money, it's time and how we spend it. So we spend our currency hurting ourselves. We invest in hurting ourselves. 
But when you say, I don't want to invest in this anymore, then the stock market of putting yourself goes down. And the stock market of, you know, putting investment in the better part of you begins to grow because your attention now is seeing what makes you inspired. And this is why I say Totec are artists because we follow inspiration. Mm -hmm. We don't live like in the same dream all the time. We always want a challenge to express and experience. And when we express and experience, we have even more. Like you talk to many minds, instead of just talking to one mind, then you have many minds, points of view that you can, you know, use the words and play with one another, learn from one another, inspire one another to create the next art that we're ready to create. Yeah. How do you decide what you want to create with your life? Do you just take it, you follow your inspiration day by day, or do you have a vision? I, I guess, tell us your process. Well, it's a vision without expectation. Okay. You have an intent, you want to experience something, but you're open to whatever. You're not like, I have to do it this way. No, no. It's not clear. It's just an intent, right? Open intention. It's like wherever, wherever it takes you, know, you know, like you make a podcast, I don't know who I'm going to interview. I'm just going to let it go, see what happens to it. Because if I have a structure, you know, I will not see out the window. I'm just going to go direct. Yeah. But when you begin a point A to go to point C, you know, there's so many directions where life can take you where you mm -hmm. have no expectation that you are going to taste. But the following the inspiration, listening to your physical body is one of the main things. Because your physical body tells you fear, tells you excitement, tells you mm -hmm. everything that your body becomes your ally. And now you're being alive. It's like my puppy, you know, if I'm taking him to the everyday, it's not that, you know, he knows every day, he knows the routine. But the moment that I take him to a different city that he's never been in or a different people that he's never met, his attention wakes up differently yeah. because he's drinking life. So yeah. the same thing with us humans. Yeah. We're just like a puppy. <laughs> and uh, the moment that we break that, that thing, how we should do it and how not to do it, we become free to create, to co-create with life instead of co-creating just with our mind. Yeah, that's beautiful. It also reminds me how even humans, when we travel and we're not in our routine and our environment, we, we feel more alive and inspired. Anything can happen. <laughs> but when we're in our normal home, it's like your brain is set to do certain things. You, you're, you're living in a, a box, kind of. Yes, I, I, I call it the automatic machine. Because exactly. <laughs> the city will get you, the city will get you. But yeah, like when you travel, like when I travel to many places, I'm like, I want to live here. I want to live here. I want to <laughs> spend time here, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I totally agree because that's inspiration. Yeah, and yeah. It, and it gives you strength to go back to create and, and let go of what doesn't work in our homes anymore. Yeah, I already feel your energy. Like you just have such good energy and you're just so like, there's no expectations. It's just fun. <laughs> yes. And I, I aim to live that way too. <laughs> That's the thing because, you know, sometimes we take the search so seriously. Yeah. That we don't, you know, that we already written the book of what we're going to expect. But the moment that we don't take life that seriously, that we're just like, you know, too old to grow up. You're like my father likes to say, you know, that we just became these children with awareness knowing what worked, it didn't work, but our heart will continue open to the, the last day. And this is one thing that I really say to myself. I want to live the rest of my life after speaking the language of, you know, the victim, after, you know, searching and then done searching. I just want to finish my soup in peace, meaning my soup is the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I've gone through relationships, drama and all that and sacrifice and, and, and you know, pleasing and all that until the moment says, you know, this... It's the love of my life. Mm -hmm. And this needs to live life too. Everything that I've worked so hard for like 20 something years to unlearn is for me to enjoy life. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what are we waiting for? For permission, validation for somebody else, for a teacher, you know, that, you know, how, like some sportsman says, before that person trains me, I want to know what's in the refrigerator, in their refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we cannot give what we don't have. Yeah. I'm thinking of all the people listening who they might be inspired by what you say, but they they still care so much about like what their parents want them to do or they care about the, what their peers think of them. How do you encourage them to let that go? Well, don't gossip about themselves. Like I don't gossip about anything I want to do because I know there's maybe some haters out there that yeah. gonna use whatever I say to sabotage me and then I surprise. I don't oh, have to announce things. Okay. If I'm like this, I just I'm like this. I don't have to say I'm gonna be like this. No. 
Oh, so don't you don't even have to announce. <laughs> I own the art that I create, and I'm like the art gallery. No one's going to see my paintings until I open that door and my premiere happens. Oh, okay. And sometimes when we change, we're changed already. And sometimes even when we change, people will see what they want to see. Exactly. You know, like I like before I was vegan, they judged me for not being vegan. And now that I'm vegan, they judge me for being vegan. <laughs> and it's in everything. People would just judge. <laughs> yep. Especially when they see someone happy. Yeah, yeah. So you just have to learn to not show them. You don't have to sh tell them. You don't have to prove to them anything, right? Yes. It's the second agreement. Don't take things personal. It's not about you. It's about them. Yep, yep. Okay, Jose, I want to know about your lifestyle. Like, I, you seem so free-spirited, but you're, I guess, what are some things that you do, whether it's every day or every week, to keep you on this authentic path? I love to follow my inspiration. And my inspiration always been music, meditation, fashion, and, uh, and creating. And I follow those things, and especially fashion. I love to say, how is mother going to express herself today? So I get all this clothing and I dress up like if I was doing puja. Yeah. And, and that inspires me to feel like my puppy when he gets groomed. You know, I walk out, I feel <laughs> nice, you know. <laughs> and, so and then from there, I find inspiration to create voice words. And, uh, and that's why when I please my puppy, when I please my physical body, I feel happy that in that moment, the authenticity comes out that I can identify where I belong and do not belong. That's why, like I said earlier, if I'm going to meet a group of people that I love, but they have a lot of judgment and opinions, I imagine that I have a scuba gear, mm -hmm. oxygen tank, yeah. and I go visit them, held their hand, but the moment that is getting intense, I remove myself because I honor my space. I don't let nobody abuse my puppy anymore. And that includes me. That's beautiful. So it's like you allow yourself to express yourself fully, knowing that not everyone will like it or agree, but you just have to protect yourself. Yes, because, you know, life, we will end one day. Yeah. So what am I waiting for to be, you know, sacrificing myself for judgment and opinions? You know, and sometimes the people who judge is the people who want to do it too. Yeah. And then when you do it freely, express yourself however you want to express, it's contagious that somebody will begin expressing themselves too. 